there, I saw people like me running things. This is a courtroom, not a circus, so we're gonna calm down. I'm sorry. What I found there was a passion that I didn't know existed. This is the bottom line. I'm excited to free fall into the limitless possibilities with we the people. So many are fearful of the law. They think it's something that works against them. I think you need to begin to accept responsibility for your mistakes. We are the people. Charlie Wright claims her cousin is entirely to blame for the boot on her car after she kindly loaned him the vehicle. Jamarcus Charles says Ms. Wright needs to look in the mirror because it's not his fault. All rise. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lauren Lake presiding. Thank you, Sean. Please be seated. Good day, everyone. Good day. This is the case of Wright versus Charles. Ms. Wright, you are suing Mr. Charles for $850.06. You say he got some parking tickets and didn't pay while he's driving your car. And Mr. Charles, you say you don't owe her anything because she already had unpaid parking tickets on her vehicle before you borrowed it. That's correct, John. All right, take me back to what happened. You let Mr. Charles borrow your car? Yes, I let my cousin borrow my car because number one, he was coming out here, he was turning 30. And I thought as his cousin, let me do something nice. My mom convinced me to let him borrow my car and we was um, throwing him a surprise birthday party at Juanito's. So when he was coming back out here, I said, all right, my mom said, let him use your car. So that day we decided to drive my car over to, his, um, over to his apartment because he was making a transition from Atlanta to uh, Queens, New York. Okay. Gave him the car. We went to go back and prep for the dinner. All right, so you gave him your car to borrow so he could run around and do the errands and things he needed to do to be ready for the party. Yes, Your Honor. All right, you went back to get, get the party together. Yes, ma'am. She let you borrow your car, Mr. Charles. Were you yes, appreciative of that? I was very appreciative, Your Honor, because I was still in the process of moving. My car was being shipped. I had more boxes coming. So I had a really a lot going on at that time. So and you ran some errands that day? I did. What happens with these parking tickets? So... I'm pulling up to the restaurant, I saw it was a new construction going on in the area, so I called my auntie to figure out, hey, where should I park the vehicle at because there's no parking structure for me to park the car. She points at this one spot that's like a block away from Juanito, it's not too far away, so I pull up to the parking spot, I park, get out, then we walk in the restaurant. We walk in the restaurant, everybody's in there, you know, like all my cousins, uncles, brothers, I haven't seen in a while, people I've never talked to in years, high school classmates, and I'm just so happy for the fact that my family even did all this for me, you know, and I... Let's get to the subject at hand. Yes, ma'am. The case is about unpaid parking tickets. You sue them for $850.06. Why is that, Ms. Wright? The reason why I'm suing for that amount is because, number one, my cousin had the parking. He had the car, right? He was out. He didn't tell you. He got drunk. So, prior to the incident, he did not tell you that we was at the party and we had a discussion. I was leaving that night from Juanitos. We was partying. I had to go to work the next morning, 8 o'clock a.m. My mom, me, and him, we all talked. And they, my mom was like, you know what? Let him keep it. Let him keep the car. Second nice thing I do, and this is the second thing that I listened to what my mom said. Let him keep the car. So I let my cousin keep the car for the night. So I went to work. Next morning, I'm, I'm at work, and then I get off work. I want you to get to the parking. So we get, so oh, I'm getting there, Your Honor. No, so, get there now. Okay, so, all right, so the parking comes. My mom said, oh, just to let you know, your cousin, um, he said it's a boot on your car. I said, are you joking right now? So I, we went back to Juanitos, and a boot was on my car. Because, number one, he parked too, he parked too far from the curb, and then I already had prior tickets on the car. All right. Now, we made it to the parking tickets. Now, Mr. Charles, you left the car there in front of the restaurant? Yes, Your Honor, one block away, yep, it was right by the restaurant. Okay, and so when you came out, I guess, there was a boot on the car. No, Your Honor, so that night, after we agreed that she would let me keep the vehicle for the night, uh -huh. and she, her mom would take her to work. So 
I, we, me and my friends, we went bar hopping after the party because I wanted to spend a little more time with him. I haven't seen him in years. You walking or you driving on this bar hop? I, we were walking, you know, Okay. We were walking. So we walked down the streets, a couple bars. We had a couple of drinks, a couple of shots. And then next thing I know, I was overly intoxicated. My friend recommended, hey, bro, no, don't, don't drive, bro, because, yeah, you just got back home, man. That's not, a, that's not a good move. You can get a DUI. So that's okay. He took me home. He said, hey, just get up in the morning, come back, get the car. It's okay, too easy. Oh, so you didn't even look at the car before you left because you were drunk. So your friend was like, don't drive. So someone took you home. Yes, Sean. Coming up. I would have never had got that boot if I didn't have, if I didn't give the defendant my car or my right. vehicle. You got it. Eureka. And later. I didn't want to split up and it was very sudden. It was just... One day, she said, I'm leaving. We're back with a dispute between cousins Charlie Wright and Jamarcus Charles over parking tickets and a booted vehicle. When did you find out there was a boot on the car? So, Your Honor, after I got, I went to sleep, I woke up the next morning around about noon. I woke up, I caught an Uber over to find the car. Immediately when I get out the car, there's a big yellow boot and a ticket on the window. The tickets for the street sweepers that have to come by in the morning and also for me being parked a little too far away from the sidewalk. But the boot, the boot led to confusion with me because I've never seen this kind of incident before. So I immediately just called my cousin because this is her car. I'm like, hey, cuz, I'm trying to call her. She's not answering the phone. Like her phone's not even ringing. It's going straight to voicemail. So I don't know what's going on. I'm starting to panic. So I said, you know what? No, let me call auntie. I call auntie, I let her know. Hey, auntie, there's a boot on the vehicle. I don't know what could be the problem. Auntie is her mother. Yes, Your Honor. All right. So she said, I said, there's a boot on the vehicle. I don't know where it could have came from. She said, hey, baby, don't worry about it. She said, just, um, we, you just got yourself bring your birthday. Relax yourself. You got a lot to do. Go home, relax, and we'll take care of it. Then she calls me, cursing me out. Your like, Honor, no, I did not. I did not cuss this man out. Number one, I... I explained to him, I was very upset. I'm like, how are we going to fix this situation? I have a boot on my car. What are we going to do? He starts swearing his words. Well, okay. And I couldn't even talk to him properly. He's like, oh, my God. I said, you know what? Click. I have to be the mature adult here, and I need to handle business. So I said, you know what? Let me make some calls. I called the boot people. I said, I understand I got a boot on my car. How do I take care of this? They told me, you know what, you have this outstanding amount to pay, and you need to pay this right now. Where are the tickets? Anybody have copies of the tickets? Here's the tickets right here. I'll take all of your evidence right there. Thank you. So once you heard, you heard back, I mean, you talked to the boot people, you got them on the line, they told you what you need to do. Here's so the I, parking ticket. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor, and then I'd like to also say, Your Honor, you see, she said tickets. I incurred a ticket, right? Not tickets. So I'm trying to figure out why am I being held accountable for something that you didn't do your on honor, your own self? Your Honor, he incurred for me to have the boot. So you got the boot because you were on the street sweeping side. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Not because you had other tickets. No, Your Honor. No. So if you got pulled over, they wouldn't have asked for that? They wouldn't have found out that you have unpaid parking tickets on a vehicle, so you put me at risk? I gave you my car to take care of. All right, so, Ms. Wright, in this evidence folder, you've got the tickets. You've got one ticket for $176.12. That's the defendant's ticket yes. from parking eight inches away from the curb and in a no-parking area. Uh, we also have a slew of tickets that you had to pay for your unpaid tickets, yes. which supersede even the defendant's ticket. You had outstanding tickets of $420, ma'am. Yes, you're right, Your Honor. You're right. Uh, okay. But, but I would have never had got that boot if I didn't have, if I didn't give the defendant my car or my right. vehicle. You got it. Eureka. Newsflash, hear what you just said. You wouldn't have gotten the boot had you not loaned the defendant your car. You should have known that you definitely don't give people your car that don't know how to park in New York, and then your mom told him where to park. He pulls over in a parking area where he shouldn't have been parking. He got a ticket for that. The boot is because of all the unpaid parking tickets that you had. Can he be accountable for where he parked the car? Can you be accountable for that? 
I can be accountable for that, John. I will take that, but you can't hold me accountable for a boot for your past You're suing him for $850.06. You basically saying he got to pay you for all the tickets you got before he ever moved to town. Your Honor, you are willing to take responsibility for the tickets you got. Yes, Your Honor. So what I need to understand, Ms. Wright, before I rule on this case is you let your cousin use your car. You were trying to be nice, and I get that. You were trying to do the right thing, right? Yes, but unfortunately, Your Honor. you allowed someone who's inexperienced driving in the one of the biggest, if not the biggest and busiest cities in America. Yes, so Your why Honor. do you think he's responsible for even the tickets that you got before he ever moved to town? The reason why I believe he's responsible because he needs to learn a lesson to be more responsible when he's partying, when he's out, and when he's, like, getting intoxicated. You don't just leave somebody's car. And number one, you don't just listen to what my mom say. Oh, go That's park the auntie. car. I don't care. Well, wait, 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 wait now. Because earlier in your testimony, you said you and your mom planned all this, and your mom was told the one who told you to let him use the car. Your so you listen to your mother. I did not want to give him my car, but I did it because I love my cousin. But the fact that everything is getting blamed you on me. You didn't want to give him your car because you had $420 worth of unpaid parking tickets and you needed to have that thing parked until you paid your parking tickets. All right, I've heard enough. It has been determined by this court that judgment for the plaintiff for $176.12, which is the cost of his parking ticket you are going to have to deal with the balance of $673.94 in tickets and the cost of the boot because of the unpaid tickets because that is your fault and your fault alone. Judgment for the plaintiff for $176.12. Court is adjourned. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant owes $176.12. Yeah, I told you. I told you, I don't know why you would put me in this position for. We're supposed to be family here. We're supposed to love each other. You gonna do this to me? Yeah, I love you, but I still want my money. Coming up. I did message her a few different times just saying, hey, how are you? To see if she responded at all. She didn't respond until I flat out said, did you sell the sculpture? And that's the only time that she responded. I you sent like two texts. Julia Martell claims her ex-girlfriend sold a sentimental sculpture they bought together while on a trip to Thailand. Rachel Moore says Ms. Martell abandoned the sculpture when they broke up, and she had bills to pay. Good day, everyone. Good day. Good day. This is the case of Martell versus Moore. Ms. Martell, you are suing Ms. Moore for $450, which is half the cost of a sculpture you say she sold. That's correct. And Ms. Moore, you are saying that the plaintiff sold other things without your permission during your relationship, and you don't owe her anything. Yes. All right. Let's get started with you, Ms. Martell. Tell me about this sculpture. How did you get it? What's the nature of the relationship between you and Ms. Moore? Um, I'll start at the beginning. We met each other in college. We were both anthropology majors, and um, as, I mean, as soon as I saw her, I kind of fell head over heels for her, and we hit it off right off the bat. Um, we ended up dating for two years before we moved in together. And on our third year anniversary, we actually went on an anniversary trip to Thailand, to Bangkok. And that is where we got the sculpture. Um, when we got and back... what was the sculpture? I have a picture of it right I'd here. like to see yeah. it, please. And I believe... Here you go. There you go, you're on. Thank you. Oh, this is lovely. So here it is. It's a beautiful, beautiful sculpture. I mean, it's an elephant with the trunk up. You were living together, so you brought it back to your home. Exactly. Okay. Our apartment. When COVID did hit and she lost her job, I was fine paying a majority of the rent because we were trying to work through it. And I did pay everything I could. We were dipping into my savings, and um, I actually I didn't tell her, but my dad got COVID during that time, and um, he was in the hospital for a while. It was really serious. He's okay now, but and I didn't know about that until right now. I had no idea about your father. Coming up. Did you try to reach out to her, Ms. Moore, and say, listen, no. things are getting tough? I didn't reach out to her. Did you sell it out of anger? No. I sold it out of need. I wanted to keep it. We're back with the case of Julia Martell, who brought her ex-girlfriend, Rachel Moore, to court over a sentimental sculpture. And, you know, we were bickering here or there, and it just kind of kept going. And then the financial burden on top of it, I finally kind of hit my breaking point when my car kind of 
started to break down and I realized that I had gone through a majority of my funds and I didn't have really the money to even really fix that. Can we get yeah. to the sculpture? Yeah, of course, yeah. So um, about a month or so later, I ran into a mutual friend and she actually told me that she was talking to her and said that she sold the sculpture and I was, I was blown away because that had meant so much to us and it, we both owned it and I thought that if she would have sold something that was both of ours, she would have run it by me or talked to me or something. And the fact that she didn't, and then she kept all the money. So how long after you moved out of the house did she sell the sculpture? A month. One month, 30 One month. days. Yes. So take me to where you were at that time. Right. When Ms. Martell moves out, what happened? I didn't want to split up and it was very sudden. It was just one day she said, I'm leaving. And so I said, take your things. Like, it doesn't matter if it's, you know, a gift that I paid for, like if it's just this house is, you know, our shared stuff. So she took what she wanted and left. I needed to pay rent that month. So the relationship is over and she left the elephant in the apartment after I said, take what you want. So I figured, okay, that's available for me to sell and I need to make rent this month. But you did know how much it meant to both it, of us. Yeah, I didn't want to sell it. Did you try to, to reach it. out to her, Ms. Moore, and say, listen, no. things are getting tough? I didn't reach out to her. Did you sell it out of anger? No, I sold it out of need. I wanted to keep it because, in all honesty, I didn't want to accept that she'd left me. I did message her a few different times just saying, hey, how are you, to see if she'd respond at all. She didn't respond until I flat out said, did you sell the sculpture? And that's the only time that she responded. I you sent like two texts. Judge Lake's verdict when We the People returns. I've heard enough. You sold the sculpture. You needed the money. You got $900 for it. Ms. Martell, because you all did own that together, it was a gift to you and together, yes, you could potentially be entitled to $450 of it if you would have cared about it or thought about it, but you didn't. But I don't think 27 days is long enough to say that you completely abandoned any and everything that was still left in that house. It's for this reason I'm going to give you half of what your petition amount is, judgment for the plaintiff for $225. Court is adjourned. All rise. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant owes $225. I'm really sorry I had to bring you to court, and I really wish things could have ended differently between us. I never wanted to sell a sculpture. Really? I'm sorry. Yeah, I wish things had ended differently.